The second episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier has just dropped and it gave MCU fans their first proper look at John Walker, aka the new Captain America, played by Wyatt Russell. The show is taking a bit of a different path with the character compared to the comics, but episode 2 does a great job of laying the groundwork for his eventual downfall and how he may become the series' actual big bad. I'm Ewan, you're watching What Culture, and with me today to discuss the episode and this particular theory is Amy Rapier. Hello. Hello, Amy, what did you think of this episode? I have to say I enjoyed this episode a lot more than I did last week. I'm not saying last week was a bad episode by any means, <laughs> um, but I, I felt the chemistry and I saw a lot more character development this week than I did last week. Do you think the same? Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I think this episode was a big step up for me personally, whereas the last one kind of felt like it was the MCU going through the motions. This is finally getting into, you know, the bones of what it means to, what I hope the series would be about, you know, legacy, the idea of Captain America as a symbol, what it means to, you know, live up to someone else's ideals and all that. And I thought it did a great job, but I think we're going to focus particularly in this video on John Walker, because I thought Wyatt Russell did a tremendous job as the character. Yes. I've not seen um, old Wyatt in anything at all. All I know is that he's literally Kurt, son of Kurt, which is really cool. And I love Tombstone, and he's gotten his name from the fact that Kurt played Wyatt, uh, Wyatt Earp in that. So he's already off to a great start in my books. But um, I thought the opening they did was really cool with the kind of inverted Star Spangled Man with a plan. And we did a video last week on John Walker's origins in the comics and, you know, how that relates to the MCU and what they could certainly look to do here. And I think the show is doing something, it's doing something different with the character in a bit of a way. Um, but at the same time, I think it's going to come to the same result. You know, it's still going to be about, you know, processing and, and unpacking what it means to be Captain America. Um, mm -hmm. And what I find, what I want to raise in, in this particular video is I think that we were all familiar with John Walker as a character being a sort of anti-hero in the comics, never an out-and-out -out villain, and I do think the same is going to apply here, but I do think he's being set up to be the main antagonist of the series, and not um, Carly from the Flag Smashers or Zemo. I do think that John himself is setting himself up for a massive downfall here, and I want to point to one scene in particular, and that is the moment where he and Battlestar um, kind of, you know, not am Bush, um, uh, Bucky and Falcon, but you know, they certainly, you know, drop in on, on their, you know, their sting operation to take down the shipment of the, what we later learn is the super soldier serum. And there is a specific moment after, you know, we've seen Walker, you know, he's, he's at the peak physical condition for a man, you know, three Medal of Honors, that's mad. Um, he's basically the ideal soldier. If anyone is going to live up to the mantle of Captain America in the most, you know, basic kind of militaristic sense, it's going to be him. But in that one moment, when he jumps onto that 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 um, the the big truck, he steps into a different world, and he gets his ass handed to him by someone with the super soldier serum. And I think in that moment, something clicks in his brain, and he thinks, "Well, I'm already feeling as though I'm not worthy of living up to the mantle of Captain America, even though I desperately kind of want to." I think in this moment, something switches in his mind, and he's going to go. I need that super soldier serum and that's what's going to lead him down the path of what we kind of see in the comics where he's originally um, the super patriot in the comics and he kind of comes onto the scene thinking Captain America you ain't cool I'm cool I'm the new kind of Reagan patriotism get the hell out of here and he gets his powers from the power broker who we also were introduced to in this episode and I think this is generally where it's going to go. And my other potential theory as well is that what if he's already, him and um, Hoskins are already kind of in that mindset before they meet them. And what if instead of tracking Bucky and Falcon because they wanted to help them out against the Flag Smashers, maybe they themselves had heard about the Super Soldier Serum and they're both desperate to get their own hands on it. I don't know what you think, but that's kind of where my the, the gears are kind of rotating in my brain at the minute. I think that would be quite an interesting angle as well in terms of showing their true colours as characters because as we stand with him sort of just trying to do his best, um, he's got a huge legacy to live up to, these big shoes to fill and we almost feel quite sympathetic to him that he's trying his best but he can't quite do it. Whereas if it were the truth that they were sort of going a bit off the books, tracking down um, Bucky and Sam purely based off of personal gain really, even if it is to serve a greater a greater purpose, I think it paints them in a very different light. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, the comics themselves have a long and tortured history with um, Captain America's who went off the rails for a bit. There was a big retcon that was introduced during Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting's run on the character, which is really good. Everyone should go read it because it essentially, not just because it, it forms the foundations of the MCU, because, you know, it's a great comic in its own right and should all go read it, but because, you know, if you love the new Captain America films, that's basically the run where they took most of their stuff from. Um, and in that run, he introduced a retcon where back in the 90s, 1950s, um, there was an actual Captain America comic, and it was called Captain America Commie Smasher. And it was basically a way of retconning the ending of the original series where Bucky and Cap kind of, you know, got exploded over the uh, the Antarctic and trying to stop a bomb. And um, yeah, that, that, that retcon was introduced so that the US government hired someone to impersonate Steve Rogers and Bucky, gave them a version of the super soldier serum that wasn't the, the proper thing because that died with Professor Erskine. And then he kind of goes a little bit off the rails, gets a little bit loopy, a little bit woo. And I feel as though maybe they could do something with here because the other thing that is interesting is that in the comics, um, John Walker, he doesn't get the super soldier serum. He goes through something called the power broker process which is um, a way of enhancing his strength and abilities to get something that is similar to the Super Soldier Serum. And I'm interested in this now because I think you know, the scheme that we're looking at here with the Power Broker more specifically is that they are after those shipments of Super Soldier Serum because they want to, you know, they, they want to start their own business of basically, you know, superpowers for, for a certain price. And I'm really curious to see how that intersects with both um, the new Captain America and Battlestar and uh, Zemo and how it all fits together because there's so many different moving parts that are going on right now and not to, you know, complete blathering on or anything, but like the fact that also Walker and Hoskins have a big history in the comics outside of Captain America. I'm curious to see whether their stories will continue outside of this series. And But again, I don't, I don't know. What, what do you think of the power broker? See, I thought that the the introduction of the power broker and sort of the Flag Smasher's reaction to the arrival of sort of all those those cars. I was prepared for the Flag Smashers to be painted as quite quite a big, powerful, bad force in this. But this episode, I really thought actually painted them in a more sympathetic light in that, um, especially as people are helping them and aiding them, seeing them as being conducive to a, a good cause and things, um, which is, I mean, that's, that's a problem in itself, um, but it showed them as people as well, rather than just these figures behind the masks that are pushing people around and exerting their super strength. Um, we had the moment where Carly is in her, the plane flying away and she has like the one tear rolling down her cheek. It gave them a much more human side, um, which is as cliche as that is, um, I think it helps nudge me towards feeling that you're right in thinking they aren't gonna be the, the big bad of this series. It's not going to be as simple as that. We're not looking at, oh, the Flag Smashers and Zemo are bad guys. That's it. One and done. I think there's going to be a lot more to it. Yeah, I totally agree. I think it's, it's the case of, you know, I think Bucky at one point or, or Sam meant, you know, expresses some sympathy for the Flag Smashers cause. You know, in, on paper, there is nothing bad with what they want to achieve. It's just that the methods are a little bit dodgy and I think you know, that's an interesting mm. angle they're going to explore here and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they dissect the legacy of Captain America and how they contrast that because the thing here that I find very cool is that when both Bucky and Sam became Captain America at different points in the comics, Bucky after the events of Civil War and Sam more recently I think about four or five years ago, um, they both had to find their own ways of being Captain America and the thing that the, the, the funk that they're both starting in right now is living up to the idea of what you know Steve Rogers was and not thinking of how can I be the best Captain America I can be and I think the interesting divergence that's going to go on here is that Walker himself is going to be so stuck down in his own head about I need this super soldier serum to be Captain America whereas when we know Sam will eventually assume the shield he will find his own way of doing it which I'm very excited to see. I have seen some talk about that online, about what it means to be your own Captain America. And even though we do have Walker claiming, I'm not trying to be him, I'm just doing my best. By sort of setting himself to that standard, 
um, he is in a way always going to be trying to be the old cat because he knows that that's that's the icon that's America's beloved hero um, but it can't work if you're not going to do it yourself and put your own spin on it so it will be really interesting to see especially how his version of it contrasts with Sam's or Bucky's or the previous cat you know yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let us know what you thought of this week's Falcon and the Winter Soldier down in the comments below. Do you think that John Walker is also being set up to be the series' big bad, or do you think they're going to go with a more traditional Zemo flag smashes route? I would love to see your thoughts down there. But once you've done that, please be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, and to also subscribe to What Culture because we will have more content on the MCU and this particular episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier because there was loads more stuff in here that we didn't get to in the video. But yeah, once you've done that, please also be sure to head back on over to What culture.com forward slash TV where you can find more listy articles and other such things there. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter if you want to at you and Bruins things and you can follow Amy on Twitter at at Amy Repair. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.